todos, soy yo, Nicole, y primero perdón que no filmé por, por tanto tiempo, en serio, perdón, no sé qué es lo que pasó, pero hoy eh, vamos a hacer un otro video de historias reales, pero eso está en inglés, no podía encontrar una en español, perdón, pero voy a hablar en español, ¿ok? Y también para los... Eh, Solo para que sepan, van a ver cuando yo pauso el video y bla, 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 bla. Así que, <ríe> así que no se preocupen y espero que eso no les moleste. Así que empecemos. ¿Has anyone ever told you that a vacation changed their life? Well, let's just say a little vacation literally destroyed my life. I would have never thought it was possible that an Instagram photo shoot would leave me homeless. Before we get it. Ok. Estoy solo 14 segundos y ya me estoy preguntando ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? No entiendo. To that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you do, you'll win a big trip before the end of the year. Ooh. That's actually where my story starts. Just a <coughs> quick getaway with my boyfriend Eric. See, from the Instagram point of view, Eric and I were two rich kids living a life of luxury. In a way, this couldn't be farther from the truth. While Eric kept insisting he was rich, there were a few... Ok, primero, miren a este hombre, ok? Primero, tiene anteojos. ¿Lo dije bien? No sé, escribo un comentario porque ya no sé, perdón. Y... Um, se ven todos negros, uh, no puedes ver nada, no puedes ver nada y ahora su collar se ve que es de oro, pero tengo una pregunta, ¿no es pesado? Y, se, y solo se ve arrogante, no. See, Eric seemed to be all about showing the world what a great couple we were and how great our lives were. Y... Miren. Ignored pretty early on. See, Eric seemed to be all about showing the world what a great couple we were and how great our lives were. I guess I always had my suspicions. Thinking back, there were a few times I should have gotten the idea that something was up. Like this one time. He took me out on this fancy date. He wore all of these expensive clothes and brought me some to wear too. That's when I noticed... They all Lo compró, va, no, no lo, puede, no lo puso a comprar. Lo, lo robó. Es un criminal. No sé. Pues la cámara todavía va a estar acá porque. Es más fácil, pero... ¿Qué? To afford it, we shouldn't do this. He would get angry at me for questioning him, saying he stayed rich by saving all these things. I thought that it was weird, but I was head over heels for the guy, so I didn't expect anything was up. That is, until I was with him for so long on this vacation. He took so many pictures, like we couldn't eat a single meal without him spending 15 minutes turning it into a little photo shoot. Esperen. Están comiendo. Están comiendo. Y él está tomando fotos 50 minutos. ¡50! Está haciendo el Instagram. Miren mi, mira la comida. Foto. Miren mi comida. Foto. Miren mi comida. Foto. Estás comiendo con tu novio lo que, o lo que sea, pero no puede ser así. No puedo. No tengo palabras. Wow. Wow. Would have seen a luxury meal with a million different hashtags underneath, wow. like hashtag blessed or hashtag couple goals. Believe it or not, there was a secret nightmare behind these photos. In fact, 
this made me question a lot of the stuff people put on Instagram. Behind every perfect photo was a huge fight and very good angles. I kept asking if Eric was happy, and he kept telling me yes. I was a little concerned until he delivered the biggest surprise of the trip. Okay, so it was the second biggest surprise, but I'll go into that later. So one day, after he spent so long snapping pictures of our food that it got cold, he went live on his Instagram story. I thought it was weird because he always took so... Desagradable. ¿Cómo puedes hacer eso? <clears throat> so long choosing filters, but nothing could have prepared me for what came next. He got down on his knees and proposed to me. It might have seemed like a quiet and intimate location, but he had millions of followers watching. I won't pretend I wasn't a little excited about it at the time. Perdón. Okay. Mario! <laughs> Así se comporta él. Okay. Looking back, it was incredibly cringy. I said yes, and we shared a pretty magical moment on camera. A moment that quickly faded when his live stream was off. That was the night before we left. I had doubts about us, but figured it would only get better. We had the rest of our lives, right? Wrong. We were all prepared to get on the plane when we were going through customs. I got flagged because something was weird, and Eric stayed back with me. The officers said it was nothing to worry about, probably just an issue with the system. Well, after about an hour of waiting, they told me news that shook me to the core. My passport wasn't valid. I don't understand, I said in disbelief. I used it to get on the plane after all. They told me that the security measures weren't as intense leaving the country as they were entering it. Unfortunately, they had just noticed that I didn't have a valid passport. I was so scared and nervous. This might have been my homeland, but I didn't want to be stranded here. It wasn't my home, and I almost had no money, relying off of Eric for most of the trip. To top it all off, I only spoke English. That's right. My parents wanted us to embrace the culture so much, they never spoke Hungarian with me. I turned to Eric to see what we should do. He looked super nervous. I asked him to stay, but he told me he would figure it out from America. He didn't want to lose his flight. Yeah, right. He left me right there in the customs. ¿Qué novio es eso? Lo que... <coughs> Espera. <coughs> no tengo el virus. Pero, ¿qué? ¿La vas a dejar a ella? ¿La vas a dejar? Sepa, su corazón probablemente de esto. Mm -hmm. Section. He turned back for a moment and I let myself hope that he was coming back for me. I feel sick to my stomach with what he said next. Oh, I can't forget this, he said, running up and grabbing my ring off my finger. It's just a rental. Don't worry. I'll buy you a new one later. Well, there I was. All alone. He left me right there without having a second thought about me. But don't worry. He didn't quite leave my life yet. You'll have to wait to the end to hear about Eric. But I promise it's worth it. I just have more important things to discuss first. I waited for hours and hours. They ended up telling me that I just wasn't an American citizen. In fact, I wasn't a citizen anywhere. <laughs> they were sorry, but there was nothing they could do for me. I was stranded with nothing but a couple of dollars, the clothes on my back, and a dying cell phone. My charger and emergency money was all in my checked luggage, which took off without me. I used the final moments of my cell phone to FaceTime with my parents. Okay, si no entendieron lo que ella dijeron, todo lo que ella tenía, importante, su ropa, el cargador para su teléfono y bla, 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 estaba en la valija que se fue sin ella. ¡Ah! And explained what happened. Turns out, they knew it was a fake passport. They had problems getting my real information, so they thought it would be just fine. ¿Qué? I was so angry, I said some pretty harsh things to them. Things that I regret saying to this day. I immediately wanted to take the mean words back, but before I could, 
the phone died. Normally, I got a little extra help from my good looks, but the stress of the experience and the lack of makeup access left me looking a little less than good. I was handed a couple of bags of stuff and just sent on my way. No one spoke English at all, and I was completely lost. I ended up living in a park for a couple of days. I sat there like a beggar with a dirty cup I took from a trash can to collect mm. coins from strangers. At first, I saved up all of my coins to try to call my parents. Unfortunately, our phone was disconnected. They didn't have social media or anything, so there was no way to get a hold of them at all. Okay, so I have a question. Um, I sé que todavía no vi hasta el final y bla bla bla, pero um, ¿cómo? Este es tan pobre y miren lo que este está usando. Algo que se llama. Oh, pensaba que es el Starbucks, ahí donde dice coffee, pero. Se ve que ahora tiene mucha plata, pero. Vamos a ver. As money got harder to come by, I gave up calling and focused on surviving. If I was lucky, I would make enough to exchange it for something to eat from one of the local street vendors. This one time, I had a pretty good day when some child stole a cup right in front of me. I ran after them for a couple of minutes, hopping over bushes and avoiding pedestrians. <coughs> I caught the kid and whipped the cup from his hand. He tried speaking to me in Hungarian, but I didn't understand anything. That's when a young girl came from behind the corner and hid behind him. She couldn't have been more than six years old. It was obvious he stole it for her. I let him have the money and just walked away, accepting that I would just have to go to bed on an empty stomach again. I sat on the ground with my head wrapped in a blanket and started dozing off. That's when I smelled the most amazing food in my life. I thought I was dreaming at first, but when I opened my eyes, there was a huge meal right in front of me. I was starving and I immediately dug in without asking any questions. I gulped the whole plate of food in under five minutes. I must have looked pretty funny doing it because I heard a little chuckle. That's right. In my fit of hunger, I never even bothered to see who had given me the food. This woman about my age in a business suit tried to say something in Hungarian, but I just stared back for a bit. When I didn't answer her immediately, she turned and said, Is English better? I just said it seemed like you were hungry. I was in tears. Like, my eyes were like literal waterfalls. <laughs> it had been so long since anyone had treated me with such kindness and that I could understand it. We talked about school and how I ended up here in the first place. When she asked me what I studied, her jaw dropped. You study computer science? She asked with her mouth wide open. That's right, folks. I'm not just some pretty face who obsessed over Instagram filters. I'm also pretty smart. She told me that smart people like me didn't belong on the streets and to stop by her office sometime tomorrow. She fiddled through her wallet for a business card with her address on it. I could barely sleep that night. It was the first time in months I was going to bed on a full stomach and I had hope. I was a little self-conscious walking up to the company building the next morning. I tried my best to wash my hair in a public restroom and clean up my clothes, but it was still very obvious I was living on the streets. Still, no one seemed to judge me at all. It also helped that the woman I saw yesterday was the CEO. I aced the interview and they... ¿Por qué? <laughs> miren, miren, miren solo acá y me voy a pausar. Well, no one seemed to judge me at all. It also helped that the woman I saw yesterday was the CEO. No tienen ojos, no tienen ojos. Y ahora se lo voy a mover la cámara. No tienen ojos. No tienen ojos. ¿Qué pasa acá? ¿Qué pasa? Yo, I aced the interview and they gave me a job on the spot. Just when I thought it couldn't get better, she gave me the company card. We don't let our employees sleep on the streets, she said with a wink. She gave me the address to a hotel they did business with. I was going to live in one of the rooms there until I got set up with some sort of apartment. She was even nice enough to send a whole bunch of clothes there. She said I could have a couple of days to settle in. But on Tuesday, I would start my first day as one of her software engineers. Now, I had some internships with tech companies before. I was expecting a room in some small hostel or a basic hotel. What I wasn't expecting was a five-star luxury experience. I had to do a double take to make sure I had the right address. When I walked in, all eyes were on me. Wow. For the first time in months, I was actually self-conscious about how I looked. Everyone was wearing elegant gowns and fancy jewelry. 
I, on the other hand, was wearing a very dirty dress and shoes with holes in them. May I help you? A butler asked, while eyeing me suspiciously. I told him I had... <laughs> butler. <laughs> ...been sent here by the tech company, and he immediately changed his tone. He brought me right up to my room. My room was amazing. It was like one of the things you would see on TV. I was even able to charge up my phone again for the first time in almost a year. I was kind of anxious to see what messages I would have gotten. Maybe something from Eric or my parents? Absolutely nothing. I logged into my Instagram only to see I now had a lot of followers. Someone had been posting content on my page this whole time. I went to my messages to see that whoever was posting on my page was also telling all of my friends I never wanted to see them again. This had Eric written all over it. I was starting to get angry again when I heard a knock at the door and looked up to see the super handsome man. He just wanted to make sure everything was okay. He introduced himself as Hans, a fan of my new company. He had promised my boss to show me around. Hans told me to make myself at home and he would meet me for breakfast after I had gotten time to wash Ooh, up and get a good morning. night's sleep. I took the best shower I had ever taken in my life. Looking at myself with my hair washed and a clean face, I started to cry again. I know it's something so small, but it really does feel nice to feel pretty after I was invisible <clears> for so many months. Invisible was something I did not have to worry about. While I'd like to take credit as I looked gorgeous in makeup and my new ball gown, I think all eyes were always on Hans. I asked him why everyone was always staring at him. Are you some sort of special guest? I asked as we sat down at breakfast. Guest? I own the hotel, he laughed. I really couldn't believe it. I always imagined the super wealthy to be mean and selfish, but Hans was everything else. The more I got to know him, the more I started to fall for him. Ooh. How could I not become infatuated with this guy? I loved the way he always brought meals to the homeless children and was very patient teaching me Hungarian. If being kind and rich weren't enough to make him the top bachelor, he was incredibly handsome. I instantly forgot all about Eric and his schemes. Unlike Eric, Hans didn't treat me like some kind of toy. In fact, he was impressed with everything I had done. I spent my days in the office making some pretty great money. At night, I'd meet with him and hang out until the wee hours of the morning. One day, he was having some pretty significant problems with his computer system, and I was able to fix everything in a matter of minutes. Aww. I know it's kind of weird, but that's when we shared our first kiss. He was looking for someone who wasn't just with him for money, and I wanted to be with someone that didn't treat me like an ex- <clears throat> Miren eso, miren esto. No sé si lo van a ver, pero... Asuri, I shared all my hopes and dreams with him, and him with me. We were dating pretty quickly. I kind of started to forget about my old life in America. I got used to the language, the people, the culture. The only thing I really missed was my parents, who I was still unable to contact. Still, my new life here with Hans gave me a new family, which I very much appreciate. One day, Hans did something I seriously would have never expected, though. He asked me to meet him on the roof of the hotel one night. He bought me a whole new outfit to wear, complete with a huge diamond necklace and fancy heels. I expected something big. But when I got there, my mouth dropped. It was like a fairy tale. There were candles all around us and a fancy violinist playing classical music. There was Hans <coughs> in the middle of the roof surrounded by roses. He told me that he had thought long and hard about our future, and he couldn't see himself without me in his. But there is something I need to do before I propose, he said, signaling somewhere behind him. Out from behind some fixtures came my parents, I ran up to them, nearly breaking my heel and jumping in their arms. Turns out the second I called them, they sold everything and moved back here. Hans had spent months looking for them for me, without even saying anything. They had spent the last years looking for me. Aww. I was bawling my eyes out like a baby. Who thought I would spend the happiest day of my life with streaks of mascara down my face? Escucharon como ella estaba... Um... 
Laughing, ¿cómo se dice eso en español? Pero me olvidé, pero escuchen, escuchen. Eh, perdón, se ve que la cámara lo estaba filmando, así que yo no sé qué filmé, pero yo estaba acá. Ya va. They had spent Escuchen the last years serie, looking for okay? me. I was bawling my eyes out like a baby. Who thought I would spend the happiest day of my life with streaks of mascara down my face? Seré como una bruja. Y perdón si ya hice esto, esa parte del video, pero... Eh, perdón. <laughs> eh, ahora vamos a continuar, porque ya no sé qué decir. Right in front of me, he asked my father for his blessing, which he gave with all of his heart. Then he knelt down on one knee and proposed to me. I said yes and never looked back. I never would have thought that I would have ended up living in a fancy hotel in Hungary, but I couldn't be happy. I still talk with some of my American friends now. But my life is Whoa. Okay. Here, and I have no intentions of coming back. Oh, and you remember Eric? Well, he ended up getting arrested. Some anonymous computer programmer released some evidence of him committing a crime. It's mm. funny how things work out like that. ¿Qué? ¿Solo, solo terminó? ¿Terminó? ¿Qué? Ok, um, esperen. Espero que les haya gustado ese video. Si les gustó esas historias, escriban en un comentario y yo las voy a hacer otra vez. Y sí, no se olviden, no olviden 